Hello. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about kind of your dreams and your goals and some of the things we can do to, to be successful in obtaining those. And so the concept of today is, is really you just need to get off your butt. And, you know, often we hear that kind of terminology and, and often it means basically you need to take action, kind of a physical movement. But there's another but I want to talk about, and that's the mental butts. And what I mean by that is when you have goals or dreams, often when we're not achieving those, we have a, a, a but in there. And what I mean by is I want to lose weight, but, or I want to make more money, but, or I'm going to write a book, but, and those are the buts I want to talk about is those mental roadblocks that are holding you back from really kind of obtaining what it is you want. So today we're going to focus on the mental uh, actions required, not necessarily the physical actions required. So when you're, when you're telling yourself, we all tell ourselves a story and when we're not being successful in obtaining or doing what we want, that butt creeps in and that kind of gives us permission to not be successful. And so one of the things is we have to acknowledge that and take ownership of that and then decide we're going to move beyond that and basically uh, kick that butt. And so what are some things you can do to help do that or so you can take action mentally? Well, the first thing you can do is be a student of others. And what I mean by that is everyone has struggles and you can learn a lot by watching other people and learning how other people have approached those struggles. So whether it's reading books or watching YouTube videos or, or whatever kind of vehicle you wanna do or use, watching and learning from others is essential. Um, uh, I'm not saying that you can't do it without doing that, but the reality of it is, is it's just easier. And so wouldn't it make sense that uh, if you could do something that, that allows you to accomplish your goal uh, quicker and easier, that it only makes sense to me to actually apply that. And so really kind of be a student of others is going to help you uh, do that. So find the people that, that you strive to be like, and then find out what they did to overcome obstacles. You're going to find there's very similar obstacles for, for all of us. Next is you've got to mentally prepare. Like I said, that, that butt in your mind is giving you permission that, hey, it's okay, you didn't do this. There, there's all these reasons why you're not being successful um, and it's okay. And you have to mentally prepare and, and, and kind of tell yourself it's not okay. And this is kind of that, that primitive brain telling me, hey, let's stay in my comfort zone. It's safe here. Let's don't do anything that has risk and, and we're gonna be okay. And the reality of it is, is, is that creates stagnation and a loss of a kind of purpose. And it really doesn't necessarily lead you to a happier life. It may be a comfortable life, but not necessarily your most fulfilling life. So you have to mentally prepare for these obstacles. Next is you've got to have a plan. And what I mean by that is a true plan, not, hey, I'm going to lose weight. My plan is to eat better and exercise, but literally a plan that spells out what are action, what actions are you going to take to achieve that, that goal to get you to that dream. So a very specific plan written out in front of you and, and able to, to utilize. Next thing is you, you've got to track your progress. So you, if you want to manage it, you've got to measure it. And so what you're trying to do is instill habits in your daily life that are the correct habits that are, are bringing you to where you want to go. And in order to do that, you have to consciously identify what habits you want and then track are you doing these habits? So let's say you want to be healthier and so you want to drink more water. Well, then you need to track how much water you're drinking. And so obviously there's apps and things like that that can help you track these things. But the important thing is, is you got to track your progress, but you also got to track it in the correct light. So often people say, I want to lose weight. And when you, when you actually do a kind of a deeper dive with them, it's not necessarily weight they want to lose, it's fat they want to lose, and they really want to be healthier. And I bring this up because someone says, I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, let's cut your, cut your arm or your leg off, see how much weight you lose. That's not what they want then. So really it's defining what that dream is and your goal is, and then making sure your plan supports that. But you have to have clarity on what it is you're trying to accomplish. 
The next thing is you've got to make it fun. It's not sustainable to do something you hate every day. Okay. There's lots of people that are successful in doing things they dislike for a long term, but the reality of it is, is it's not sustainable over, over a long term. So somehow you've got to tie this to fun. I'm not saying everything's going to be fun, but in the end, you have to find enjoyment in what you're doing. So tie it back to something that results in fun. It's got to have fun. It's got to be a component of it. Next is you got to understand what your core values are and does your long-term plans align with those. So um, if, you're, if you're saying, I want to do X, Y, or Z, and, but that doesn't align with your core values, you're, you're not going to be happy, first of all. You're going to probably not do a very good job at get, getting there. And you're just going to struggle along the way and not get any enjoyment out of it. So a good example is, let's say you want to be a doctor because your parents always told you uh, that they, they want you to be a doctor. So you strive to be a doctor, but it's really not something you want to do. You've kind of told yourself that's what you want to do because that's what your parents wanted you to do. But the reality is it doesn't align with your core values. So the first thing you got to do is you got to identify what it is you value. And this can be difficult because this is really kind of doing a, a deep dive into your psyche to understand what it is you value in the context of, I don't mean value in materialistic things. I mean, value is like trust, honesty, love, happiness, those types of things. So you got to understand that does what you're trying to accomplish as your long-term goals, is it in alignment with your core values? The next thing, and, and one area that I see uh, frequently as a cause of people not being successful is you've got to schedule your time. And what I mean by that, when we talk about we're trying to create these daily habits, so let's say you want to lose weight. So one of your goals is to exercise 30 minutes a day. If that's just your goal is exercise 30 minutes a day, but it's not on your calendar and not actually blocked out when, when that's actually going to happen, the odds of you being successful long-term are very low. Okay? So one of the things you do to improve that is schedule it. So beginning of your week, schedule your week. You know when you're going to exercise. The nice thing about that is now you've committed that time, that kind of that placeholder, if you will, and you've removed some of that kind of mental fatigue or decision making because now you don't have to make any more decisions. You know when that's going to happen. You know how it ties into your long term values or your long term goals and how it supports your values. So you've got to schedule your goals. And what I mean by that is literally schedule. This is when I'm going to exercise. This is what I'm going to write on my book. This is when I'm going to do X, Y, or Z. And it's on your calendar because if you don't manage your time, then someone else is going to manage your time. And that's essential that your time is utilized in working on the right things. It's the things that you want. The challenge is, is often our long-term goals are just that. They're long-term, so they're important to us, but they're not urgent. And those type items that fall in kind of that bucket of important but not urgent, we always are going to do those someday. Well, if you look at a calendar, there's not someday on a calendar. So the important thing is, is that those important things to us that aren't urgent, you've got to schedule time to make sure those happen. The next thing is, is to create if then statements. And what I mean is, is you're gonna have obstacles. Don't be naive, whatever, if you have a goal that's a stretch goal, there's gonna be down times and there's gonna be obstacles. So in your mind, create a tool that's preparing you for those obstacles. So if this happens, then this is what I'm going to do. So let's go back to the analogy of scheduling time to exercise. Okay, and on your time, on your, your calendar, you've already blocked the time. Well, someone now says, hey, Kelly, uh, I need you to do this. Okay, so that's an if, if someone encroaches on this time, then what am I gonna do? And then, so for example, you'd say, if someone wants to uh, encroach on that time, then I'll thank them uh, for considering me for whatever it was, but I don't have time currently for that. Or if they ask you for time, then you need to find a different time to schedule whatever it is they are asking to do if that's something that aligns with your values. So if then statements are very helpful. The next thing is don't get, get caught up in the messy middle. Now, often when people uh, set out to obtain, obtain a goal, they start from where they're at and then try to build a plan to that goal. I want you to reverse engineer this. I want you to start from where you want to be, okay? I want you to think about, hey, this is what the weight I want. This is the help I want. And then I want you to actually think about that for a minute 
and visualize what does that look like? What does that feel like? What does it produce for you? And then reverse engineer and work backwards from that. But so you clearly have in your mind's eye of what it is you're working towards. And if you work backwards towards that, you always have that vision of where you're going right in the forefront of your eye or your mind. And that's going to help you continue to drive uh, to that goal, specifically during those difficult times. The next item is avoid perfectionism. Often people will develop their plan and say, ah, it, it can be a little bit better. I'll, I'll, I'll start it tomorrow because there's a few more things I want to do. No, go, okay? Uh, th that is the time to get off your butt. So uh, when you develop your plans, don't worry. Are they perfect? Absolutely not. Are there going to be changes? There is. And have that built into your plan, that the flexibility of the plan is one of the great things of the plan. So it's essential that perfectionism can bog you down and, and stop you or at least hinder you. Don't let that be one of those things that make it so you're not obtaining your goals. Next thing is share with others. Create that supportive environment and then share with that environment what your goals and objectives are. The nice thing is, is by actually voicing what it is and letting the world know, it creates kind of this internal accountability that's more likely to drive you to be successful. Secondarily, it's creating a support system for you to help you along the way when you encounter those obstacles. Remember, if it's a supportive environment that you've created, when you're having a down day, they're gonna to come to you and say, hey, you got this. Today, yeah, today's a bad day, but learn from today and let's move forward. So really share with others what it is you're trying to accomplish. And then the next thing is to celebrate. You've got to celebrate the wins. And what I mean by that is maybe you you uh, uh, decide you're going to exercise for 30 minutes a day. And you get up at five in the morning and you go to the gym and you exercise, but you kind of feel like today I just didn't feel it. And I kind of went through the, the emotions more than really uh, working out hard. It's okay. You're going to have those days. Celebrate the fact that, hey, you know what? I got up. I made it to the gym. Find the reasons to be appreciative and celebrate the, the small wins that are in, in your daily actions because they're there, but often we kind of get blinded to them by our negativity. So remember, look for the small wins and celebrate them and celebrate them obvious, uh, often, okay? So kind of putting this all together, I have a, a mnemonic that I use that basically uh, I say, I'm going to whoop your butt. And what I mean by that is I say whoop, W-H-O-O-P, is a mnemonic to help me remember how do I get past these mental blocks or these mental obstacles that I'm going to encounter. So the first part of the whoop is W or wish. What is it I'm wishing for? Do I want to be healthier? Do I want to be more financially independent? Do I want to write a book? Whatever that wish is, first identify that wish and articulate that. Then H of whoop is heart. How does this connect to my heart? How does it connect to my why? Why do I want that? This is an essential step because this why component is what's going to give you the energy you're going to need to be sustainable. So those days that you're feeling down and like, oh, just too tired or there's too much going on. I know I got this on my calendar, but I, I just, I, I got to do these other things or I just don't have the energy to do it. Remember your why. It's in your heart. Why did you start this in the first place? Was it to get healthy to play with your grandkids? Was it to get healthy so you can enjoy more time with your spouse? Whatever your why is, it's in your heart. It's that emotional component. And it's essential you identify that and relate to that. The next uh, part of the whoop is O, outcome. What is the outcome? What is the specific goal that you're trying to achieve here that supports this wish? So. I want to be healthier. Okay. Then I want to uh, lose body fat. So I want to eat healthy. Well, what does that mean? So now you got to start remembering you're going to go, okay, I got to track what I'm eating and things like that. And that can be kind of burdensome. And so you got to remember why you're doing this, how it connects back to that wish, how it connects to your heart, and then what is that outcome? And, and then how do you support that outcome? The next O a whoop is obstacles. What obstacles are you thinking that you're going to encounter? You're not going to be able to identify every obstacle, but you'll be able to identify a bunch of them. 
And so already have a game plan on how you're going to attack that obstacle. So identify those obstacles. The next is the plan. So how are you gonna work through those obstacles and what are the steps you need to take to achieve your dream? So that's the, the P of WHOOP is your plan. And do you have a clear cut plan that addresses your obstacles and addresses the steps you need to take to get to that dream? Okay, so that's kind of the mnemonic I use is to whoop my butts is really what I'm trying to say is those mental butts. How do I prevent those for, from controlling my life and getting me off track? So when I say I'm going to whoop your butt, I say that mentally. And what I mean is what is the wish? How does it affect my heart? What's the outcome I want? What's the obstacles and what's the plan? So remember that kind of that little uh, quick mnemonic. It helps quite a bit for me in trying to be successful and moving past uh, the daily grind and finding that enjoyment I, I'm striving for along the way. So I'm enjoying the journey on the, on the way to success. So again, get off your butt, both physically and mentally, and get out there and accomplish those things you want to do. And if there's anything we can do to help, just let us know. Thanks.